Yeah, so just a quick top-down view, I'd say it seems like Cardinals and Ruins die like two, three times a week, and then they bounce back, and then they die again, and we're just in that uh, valley, um, and then we'll hit another peak soon enough. Um, I think all triggered to, you know, Bitcoin price and this bigger factors like beyond the scope of Ordinals and Runes, but affects it nonetheless. Um, I do think Blast is definitely uh, taking some market share over a recent uh, time now because people are um, spending their time there. Um, and there's been some a couple of interesting stories that I've seen uh, the last couple of days. I don't know if you've been paying too much attention, but uh, Shroom Toshi uh, departs uh, Bitcoin in Ordinals. Did you hear the news? No, I didn't hear about that. What's going on with it? He basically inscribed his exit and was like, it's been real and I'll you know, see you on the flip side and uh, walks away with 500 Bitcoin and you know, the collection, the Shroom Toshi collection, the sub 1K collection is now sort of like on its own without a, without a founder or anyone to lead it. Oh, wow. So that's huge. The Shroom Toshis, those are the ones that are like a two Bitcoin floor, right? The, the oh. one of the first thousand inscriptions. Yes, exactly. Oh, wow. That is pretty big news. But honestly, like, I guess props to some extent for just stepping away. I, I think there's definitely been a shift from what a project is in the past year to two years where we were talking about this when we had Lizard Capital on. Um, you know, people used to like have a vision for projects and it used to be like, we're going to scale this up into a company and we're going to make sure that everyone who is part of this project is a shareholder and they get you know, rewarded every year. I think we're at the point now where it's more so just like a collectible almost. Like I view all of this very akin to just like Pokemon cards where, okay, now we're on Bitcoin. Now there's these collections that come out. There's going to be some collections that are more historical than others, but I definitely wasn't expecting for the majority of the ordinals. There's definitely some that have, you know, tools and communities with them. But I think especially on ordinals compared to like ETH, the expectation, at least in my mind for a lot of these is just like, cool, you got an inscription as part of a collection. Mostly agree. Um, you know, the the inscription numbers is something that's kind of uh, original to Bitcoin, not like uh, on Ethereum where you could be an early NFT, but unless you know sort of like the entire horizon and history of, of Ethereum and NFTs, it's not, it doesn't have much provenance, uh, maybe except for CryptoPunks. But what I just found interesting was why make an announcement? Why not just, uh, you know, say nothing? But but it's an interesting story nonetheless. I do think it kind of um, leads to the speculation of a future return potentially. And then sort of like Sartoshi when he did, uh, you know, MFers and then kind of came back with a token, you know, recently, maybe a month or two ago on base. So it kind of sets the stage for some kind of comeback in the future, I think. Yeah, it's definitely possible. I mean, at the same time, what is it? 500 Bitcoin is like $20 million. Is that right, mathing? Let's see. 10 Bitcoin is like 600K. So 100 would be 6 mil. Um, so 500. Yeah, that's like 30 mil. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could see it either way for sure. I definitely think there's something with like in this space, if you're a founder and you're making all that money, you'd still be glued in and still have like, some eyes on the prize, uh, but I also would not fault him if after making, you know, retirement money, like tried and true, a fantastic retirement. I, I wouldn't blame him if he stepped away with that. That's crazy though. Yeah, GG to Shroom Toshi. I mean, that that that's a win in my book any day. And um, a couple other stories I saw, obviously not as big as that one. It was, um, there was a based angels uh, ordinal mint maybe a week ago or two two weeks ago and now they've announced um a rune a rune token for it so i've seen that price kind of move up a lot today a lot of action on based angels and then the other one that i seen a lot of action on brought me back to the nat cat days was uh dmt nat frogs a lot of otc spreadsheet uh buying is happening right now on on the nat frogs all right, let's go. Yeah, I did see both of those. I thought the based angels were pretty interesting because it keeps following this like 
Milady community that have run into, you know, multiple collections at this point. So I know they have Vermilios, um, they have like Milady Makers, they, they just have so many different uh, subsects. I'm not super familiar with that ecosystem, but it, the art style is, you know, the same exact thing of sort of this, uh, I don't know, kind of just like doll-esque character dressed up in different based outfits, so to speak. And I know there's a big community uh, on Twitter and all that that follows that. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. They've gone up about 100%, I think, in the past 24 hours. They were at like 0. 0.0002. Uh, now they're at 0. 0.0004. But yeah, definitely a notable collection to point out there. Uh, and that's really exciting stuff to see that we get some DMT action in there. Obviously, I think any inflow into the DMT ecosystem will be good. Has that redacted project come out yet? I know that was one that's been teased for like months and months, and I thought they were going to do the mint at some point this week. It was actually supposed to be yesterday, but they've now delayed it till the following Monday, I guess due to some other uh, snags. And just to correct you on based angels now up to 0. 0.0058 so that's like a 3x uh in the Ooh. last 24 hours my goodness yeah i looked i looked like an hour before we uh got on here so i guess they've just been pumping pumping away in the background but yeah that's exciting i definitely thought about scooping a decent amount of them just because i thought okay for sure you have the milady community which is so strong on crypto twitter i mean it really does come down to like how influential the communities are going to be um in terms of how well some of these collections will do so that one i'm surprised to see it doing this well but at the same time not too surprised i'm just like there's so many different collections so it's crazy that they always go in and pump the floors but sure enough they're doing the damn thing uh another project i wanted to talk to you about laugh i actually bought one of them on a pump so things have fallen back a little bit so I'm now a community member as they call it but blobs uh i bought the blobs when i heard the news that they bought the epic sat so for those of you who don't know, the first Satoshi after the halving is called an Epic Sat. So there's only been four in the history of Bitcoin. And I think this is the first one that someone was actually able to mine. Uh, they sold it for like $2 million and then they inscribed a blob on it. So when I saw that, I was like, wow, that's super bullish for blobs. Someone is spending $2 million on them. They pumped up to like 0 0.08 for about a day and now they're... In between 0 0.055 and 0 0.06 uh, for the past 48 hours or so. So curious if you saw that laugh and curious if you have any thoughts on it. Yeah, I did actually. Um, over the weekend, I uh, Mr. E told me that uh, be on the lookout for an Epic Sat uh, minting, uh, ruin minting on Epic Sat. So I was I was waiting for it, and then I heard the news that uh, Blob was potentially getting an airdrop of it. Um, and I think the Epic Sat wound up dropping with just a 5% public, uh, mint allocation. And the other 95% is pre-mined and it's going to go to, I believe, Blob holders and potentially some other, um, I guess communities that I'm not quite sure. I haven't seen any of that, uh, like kind of confirmed, but that's been the speculation. And um, sort of like in this to talk about rumors, I've been hearing rumors that um, that Fehu, the number one minted rune, potentially could be linked to uh, OMB and uh, and uh, Z ZK. What do you think of that one? Have you heard that one? Oh, wow. I have not. I think when I first heard it, Fehu was supposed to be doing something where they were rewarding like the top rune communities. So I think I heard they were going to be dropping to uh, Dog. They're going to be dropping to Arsic, but that's pretty interesting. I that wouldn't surprise me honestly. I mean, OMB has some pretty significant presence in the space. They're also their floor has been up pretty decently. I mean, we've really just seen like all of the blue chips in the space falling down, except for Quantum Cats and OMB have been holding super well. Uh, and I'm not really too surprised. I think those are the t like some of the communities that are just most Bitcoin oriented. And I know we've like talked and alluded to this about, you know, across some of the episodes that we've uh, recorded, but there really is like a different mentality b behind some true Bitcoin OGs versus other parts of the market. I also think with the market always looking ahead, it seems like Quantum Cats is going to be the sort of like the next collection with news coming its way. So now with that Opcat, um, I guess, integration 
maybe we're like that much closer to the Taproot Wizards. Um, I don't know. Maybe these maybe these Quantum Cats turn into the Taproot Wizards. Could you imagine? Dude, honestly, I could. Like the supply of them really, I think, benefits that theory. Um, let me just make sure I get the numbers right here because there's just so many collections and different things to look at. But let me pull up Quantum Cats real quick. Um, let's take a look here. So yeah, Quantum Cats is a 3.3k collection. So I think I've heard the rumors that it would be one dead Quantum Cat and one alive Quantum Cat. And for those who aren't familiar, those are just different types. So half of the Quantum Cats are dead, half of them are alive. Some play on Schrodinger's cat there for sure. Um, but yeah, I think the rumor is that you'd have to exchange one of each type of cat to get it. Um, so, you know, 3.3K supply, uh, you have a little bit over 1,600 there. So 1,650, which seems like a pretty good collection size. I mean, especially for ordinals, like Taproot Wizards, it seems like it would be small enough, but also large enough at the same time. So I, I would not be surprised at all if that's the key to Taproot. Yeah, and it's it's held this price pretty good since the last show last week. I mean, it's it's still hovering about around 0.4 Bitcoin, uh, which uh, I would say is is holding up better than um, pretty much any other collection at the moment. Yeah, most of the other stuff has been really just getting thrown to the woodshed to an extent. Um, I definitely seen like to your point earlier, we we have seen some pumps, but they last for like a day and then they cool off. Uh, a collection I wanted to ask you about, WAF, is what is going on with puppets? You know, I still have been holding my puppets for the longest time, um, but it just keeps dipping lower and lower. And I'm just kind of like curious, do you think that's just because people aren't as excited about puppets anymore? Do you think it's just the ordinal space as a whole? Um, it's something that I've really been trying to flip around in my mind, you know, just to figure out what my next move is with the puppet. Um, maybe even buying some more here d definitely seems like it's gotten to a price level it hasn't been for a couple of months but it is very interesting to just watch it slowly dry up you know i think the market's in a chop and in this kind of market people get bored and you know it'll it'll kind of like shake you out and and wear you out and i think people have mul have a lot of profits in bitcoin puppets so this is them exiting while they can with a profit i mean a lot of people probably been been holding since mint or below 0.1 like nobody really expected it to run up to where it did um and now that it's coming down people like want to make sure they get out with a with a profit so i don't i don't know what the entry entry point is on this on this collection at 0.239 it's still quite pricey um I don't know but what i've been actually paying more attention to is actually rune pups because rune pups has been sort of uh, moving between 0 0.06 and 0 0.09. I mean, like it's like literally a 50% move like weekly back up and down. So I've been kind of watching that along with the PUPS uh, BRC20 token. Um, and I just think right now the attention is more on, on sort of like the fungible tokens than it is on the collections. And so, so there's really nothing else coming for Bitcoin puppets at the moment. And I think that's why it's kind of struggling with its price. Yeah, I completely agree with you there, Waf. And I mean, I think, you know, it all just ties back into people being more interested in liquidity and low friction environments, I think, than they were previously. You know, there's really just not as much uh, hype and anticipation for NFTs. There's certainly collections that come out that get people excited. But I think you definitely see more people this year trading meme coins. People were looking to trade runes. Um, it still looks like they're trading meme coins. But um, yeah, I, I definitely think that the NFTs are just a harder sell without less, uh, without catalysts working towards them. And you know, just talking about quantum cats and how that's going to lead to taproot wizards makes sense that that's holding a lot better than puppets, where they've sort of exhausted the uh, airdrops. So the one collection I feel like I'm absolutely going to pull the trigger on um, is Bitcoin frogs. I mean, 0 0.051. I've been kind of procrastinating on buying one, and it's actually been working out for me because the price keeps dipping. I really don't know how much lower Bitcoin frogs could actually go. I, I feel like the downside is so minimal at this point that um, I'm definitely getting in on a Bitcoin frog. Yeah, it's funny. They had that derivative collection where it was just like low-fi art version of the Bitcoin frogs that came out, and that was pretty popular this week. So I was surprised to see the Bitcoin frogs weren't pumping along with it. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, something that we've seen with ordinals is that it's just a very slow adoption curve, right? I think I saw something that like 90% of the collections that are in the top 20 on ordinals took over 10 months to mint out. So, you know, ordinals as a whole, still a very new ecosystem. I think that there's a lot of people that came in, lost interest, moved on to the next thing. So I definitely think a lot of these collections will all come back uh, in in full force whenever the market kind of picks up a little bit more. I definitely have the end of May circled in my calendar. I think at this point in the you know, crypto sphere, we're seeing a lot more traders who are trading cross chains. So I think before it was pretty normal to see people who are just on ETH or just on Sol, but like, you know, we're at a point now where most people are on ETH, Solana, Bitcoin, like pretty much everyone's trading everything or at least trying to. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we do see some of that blast stimulus pour back into the market. Um, and I guess also something to, you know, keep into account is that people were getting their Merlin uh, assets unlocked this past week. Um, obviously, some of them were still available a few days ago. But I, I mean, myself included, it's just like I finally got my Bitcoin puppet back, I think, three or four days ago. Um, so there is a good chance that we're just seeing a lot of those assets that were unstaked flood out of the ecosystem. That could have been it for some people where they're like, hey, you know what, I'm just done. Um, so I think we're seeing a little bit of an ebb. But definitely once we have some stimulus at the end of uh, May, definitely think we could see some of that come back. Yeah, I got I got eight Nat Cats back from from the Merlin seal, so I was happy to receive those. I still have a couple of things pending, but for the most part, those were the ones I was most uh, happy to get back. I do think the market has a tendency to get, get you get caught off sides where um, when things are very um, when you can be very liquid you, 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 and things are pumping, you tend not to take profits, and then and then when things start kind of drying up. You get caught in a position where you start selling in a time that you probably should be buying. Like right now, I just think if you're liquid, you have pretty much your pick of the litter on what ordinals you you want to kind of get in on. Oh yeah, completely agree. I mean, um, you know, before I was trading NFTs, I was spending a lot of time trying to learn stocks and options, and just this like best trader uh, in this paid group I was in. He was always just talking about the max pain hypothesis where the, you know, um, the market will move in ways where it's just causing the most amount of people to lose money because the market's all about extracting money from one participant to another. So it absolutely makes sense in situations where we see things just continue to pump and it's classic like, oh, I sold my bag too early, sold my bag too early. People who are selling, they're getting wrecked. And in this case, you know, people who are going to be I guess buying right now, they might be dipping and then wrecking, but at a certain point, it's just going to turn back around and people are going to be tempted to get shaken out. Um, I'm kind of with you. I don't, I don't think this is the end of the cycle here. I feel like there's just too much, <laughs> too much juice left in Bitcoin. Uh, obviously, we had a pretty steep sell off on crypto across the board uh, with war news over the past couple of weeks, but it does seem like Bitcoin is starting to stabilize a little bit as well as Solana. Um, I'm not sure the direct correlation there, but I do think that, you know, just having some stability in meme coins as well as Solana, again, like if people are making profit in other parts of the market, I think it's more likely that we see that trickle into ordinals and runes. So um, I definitely think that if we see a situation where the whole ecosystem, Bitcoin, ETH, Solana, all starts pumping, it would make sense to me at least that we'll get a continued pump over uh, in ordinals world. So I think it's just a matter of time and I'm definitely with you. I'm I'm looking more to buy at this point than I am to sell. Yeah, I mean, even if you look at the top uh rune collections, they they've all sell, sold off quite considerably and then there's been some uh degen mint still doing well for a few days. Um Napoleon dropped dropped a uh a rune that did really well for for a few days. Um, I, I've seen recently the Donald Trump and now the the Joe Biden, you know, tokens coming out. So there's still some place to be had. Um, nothing with any like real conviction. But I do think if you if there's some runes you want to get into, um, we can talk about that. I think Arsic has been down. That's one I'm bullish on. Uh, Decentralized is one that kind of um, I'm a little bit. Uh, 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 astounded by how how badly it's it's dropped that I'm like the market's just punishing decentralized. I don't know don't know why really. And then dog go to moon also seems to have fallen off. And then I haven't really seen too much um, like 
hyping any hyping it up by Leonidas on X or anything. It just seems like it's a little bit quiet right now. Um, so it might be a good time to, to accumulate. I see. I seen a similar thing uh, l- around this time last year with BRC twenty tokens. Like after their initial pumps, they just kind of went down, down, down. The volume dried up, and then you know, next thing you know, they kind of they were like zombies, and they just kind of came back from the dead. Uh, stronger than ever so we could be in that you know reaccumulation phase right now but if you're bag holding from the in, the initial mint like you might be looking to get out because it, it looks like it's over but it might be a time to actually kind of like double down yeah 100 percent there uh laugh and i think i mean the big thing i think is just finding conviction um i definitely did trim some of my runes over the past week or so just kind of looking at stuff that I wasn't as sure about. And I'm I'm pretty c- confident that we'll get a resurgence of runes at some point. And I think when we see a lot of volume come into the ecosystem, everything will pump. So <clears throat> I sold some stuff like Koalas on Impala, um, where it's like, you know, it's an early rune. I'm sure there could be some scenario where that pumps pretty aggressively in the future. But I really just wanted to place my bets into things that I felt confident that those are the leaders. So like Arsic is the main one. Um, but honestly, you know, as of the past 48 hours, all I can focus on is just buying wizard, uh, BRC 20 and getting ready for magic internet money. I mean, that was like my whole thesis going into runes when they were dropping is wow. Magic internet money is just like the best Bitcoin meme available. It onboarded so many people. It just has so much significance to Bitcoin. And the fact that the person who created that ad on Reddit, I think back in like 2012, is still behind it and actually got the ticker magic internet money like there was a lot that could go wrong but there's a lot i think now that's going right for them um the wizard uh ordinal itself got up to like 0.4 prior to the halving now they're at like 0.2 um but we talked about it last week 95 percent of the supply of wizard uh or of magic internet money is going to get airdropped to wizard holders so i mean you can already figure out the market cap of what magic internet money is. And it's like right around 130 million, which is just super light. Um, you're comparing that to Arsic and dog, which even after the huge fallout are still around 250 million. So just using those comps, like I think personally, the magic internet money is a better meme than dog. I think R6 probably has a lot more up its sleeve in terms of like where the Ponzi is going to take it. And, some sort of exciting developments, but just in terms of memes relating to Bitcoin, my personal view is that magic internet money might be like the top one on chain. So at only 130 mil market cap, it just seems like an absolute buy in my mind. So I bought a bunch today around $6. Uh, If it goes below $6, I'm just going to keep buying it. But I also love with this that it's like, it's more liquid than um, the ordinals themselves. So it's a lot easier to get some liquidity. We're still not fully at that point where there's like LP set up and you can quickly get in and get out. Um, but yeah, I really, I really like the the play. I think there's definitely a lot of upside there. We're, we're completely on the same page because even this past week I trimmed uh, some of my earlier rune mints that I don't, don't have the high conviction on uh, just to kind of like take some money off the table and not necessarily a cash out on the ones that I have more conviction on. So Koala on, on Impala is like one of the ones that, that I cashed out on. And I would say like to your point about Wizard, there's two others that I'm, I would say my top three, my top three runes I think are, and then in no particular order, is Arsic, Wizard, and Pups. And then everything else I feel like, you know, it could do well, it might, it, it may maybe, maybe not, but those three I have pretty high conviction on. And then... I did see an interesting po- uh, uh, post on on X where someone mentioned that like Book of Memes on Solana is like a eight hundred million dollar market cap, and if you come if you add up the the market cap of those three combined, you don't even get to eight hundred million. So I think there's still a lot of room to run um, on all these runes. I really do. Yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, you know, <laughs> we're gonna keep going back to the theme, but. So much of it is just a rotation in the space, right? Because when you're looking at Book of Meme and looking at the things that surrounded it, it ran up right around the time that WIF broke either one bill or two bill. And then it, I mean, Book of Meme went to a billion in like a day. I think it was the start of the pre-sale meta. Maybe it was like two or three days, but 
it was a very quick timeline. And then you just saw meme coins across the board on Solana just rip um, and just very quickly, you know, go up to these crazy market caps and fall back down. Uh, and so far, we've really only seen, I think the height of it was maybe like 500 million. Dog was briefly valued at that. And I'm not even sure if that's completely true because I think that might have been based off of the uh, whales over the counter pricing. Um, but yeah, just the fact that these rune collections on Bitcoin are only worth like 250 million. And that's, I mean, that's, it's still significant, but it's not anywhere near the top five collections on Solana or Ethereum. Like, they definitely still have room to run. Uh, so I think it's just a matter of time until we do see one of them pop off and hit a billion. And just based on activity that we've seen in other places, usually once you see one of them reach a billion, it opens up the floodgates for the rest to follow. So to your point there with three of them being smaller than Book of Meme, which at this point is like not really relevant, but it's still holding that market cap. Like there's plenty of opportunities in the future. Yeah. So I mean, I think here I'm going to look to add uh, some pups uh, because during the week I was I was monitoring it like pretty much every day. And last week when we did the show, it was pretty much at around the price that it's at right now, $27. It ran up to about 45 during the week and now it's back down to 27. So I just think as a trader, so maybe maybe this is a better play for you than it is for me, but as a, as a trader, uh, there's so much opportunity there and it, and it goes back to what I mentioned on the rune pups because like same thing, it, it's at 0.06. It ran up to 0 0.09. It's back down to 0 0.06. So you can see the correlation there between the 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 prices of uh, both the BRC and the Ordinal. Um, this seems like the bottom on those plays. Uh, if you want to if you want to do like a quick flip, uh, Wizards. I've been kind of slowly accumulating as well. Um, and then I'm just kind of looking at some of the Ordinals that I potentially might make a play into. And I think I think right now at the top of the list is uh, as uh, Bitcoin frogs. And I know you mentioned there were some collections you were looking at. I know last week you were look you were talking about quantum cats. Like I haven't pulled the trigger on anything like that yet because when I pull a trigger on a on a big purchase, I like to be a little bit methodical with it. So I'm just curious, like what else, what else are you looking at in terms of uh, ordinals or just just anything else in general? Yeah, so I've really just been glued to ordinals. Um, I was blast farming pretty aggressively over the past couple of weeks, but I kind of hit a point where I was like, all right, I'm done with blast farming, I think, for the time being. I'm just going to wait and hopefully get some stimulus there to throw at some other stuff. Um, the main collections I'm looking at are definitely puppets, uh, quantum cats, and node monkeys. So quantum cats haven't fallen down to a range I feel comfortable buying. They really have just been at about a 0.4, but I do like buying stuff where I can kind of take a flip if I want to. I don't always take it, but I like that option of just like being up a little bit. Um, I think Puppet's floor isn't in quite yet. I just keep seeing listings coming in and pushing it lower. So it's at like, I almost bought a really sick one at like 0.3. And I guess I was lucky because someone bought it like literally as the transfer was processing i swapped some eth to get some bitcoin to buy it and like as it cleared it was gone um so those are coming down i would say like i would feel really comfortable buying a puppet below point two. if it went to that point i would definitely scoop another i just think like you know um it is a collection that's just more art based and more vibe based but i do think that they're just such a popular profile picture on twitter um so i would be inclined to get another there I'm definitely looking to get another blob, uh, you know, because I, I think what you see when you trade enough NFTs or collections in general is that usually if something makes a price point and the market doesn't just completely disintegrate, it will usually return to that price point at some point. Um, definitely saw that with pups in early days and quantum cats, as well as node monkeys, like, you know, the price oscillates. So to your point of just trying to buy when others are selling, I think is a good practice. Uh, so I think blobs, there's a really good opportunity there. Those definitely have been going up uh, and down pretty with a, with a lot of volatility. So if I can get a low on, on blobs, I'd feel great. And then Node Monkeys is the third of those collections that I mentioned. I mean, still just an absolute blue chip ordinal. There's no denying that. That's getting to the low 0.3 end. I definitely think if it gets to the mid point twos, I would for sure be a buyer. Um, I think you can also just look at the huge sales that came in early in the year. I would have to imagine that there's more follow through from whales at some point because they did spend so much money. Like it would make sense for them to dollar cost average. So 
those are the three collections for me. Only thing I pulled trigger on so far is a blob just on that Sats news, but bought a little high, like I said, and we'll for sure be scaling in more as they dip more. I bought two blobs that, um, back way back when they first came out for like 0.01. And I've still been sitting on them. Uh, have you been utilizing the uh, the Magic Eden offers? I mean, it's like it's kind of like uh, blur farming at this point. You can just throw in your bids. Um, you don't even need to have, I guess, the necessary Bitcoin to cover all your bids. So you can put them all out there. I think uh, it's not a bad idea to do that. And then also... I've been noticing on some collections they've been adding like a like a boost of like Magic Eden diamonds onto them. So I think that kind of uh, pushes some volumes to to those collections. So it might be a good idea to like look at those. Which right now I see Node Monkeys has like a plus twenty five percent diamond boost. Blob, Runestone, Quantum Cats, um, Arsic. So this there's a. Pretty much a lot of collections that we've been talking about have have this uh, additional Magic Eden Diamond boost on them too. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, that's something for us to talk about as well is just the Magic Eden rewards that are coming out. Um, to your first question, let's see. What was it? Just oh, putting out offers. Yeah, I definitely have put out some offers. Um, I think that's just something to monitor closely because there is sort of like a collection offer similar to Tensor where you can just instantly sell into the top offer on a collection. Um, and sometimes the floors will crater a little bit overnight and you'll get someone to accept it. But definitely lowballing some people if they're looking for instant liquidity, especially if there is a low bid on the floor of the collection, you can you know just slightly overcut it and then try to get people to take your bids. I think that's a great strategy. Um, I was kind of surprised, have not seen as much volume as I would have expected from the 25% boost. Uh, you know, Rune Pups, I think, is down a lot, even though they just got the 25% boost. Um, Node Monkeys haven't really seen too much movement. And then same thing with Blobs. They were at 0.08 two days ago. Uh, they fell down to like 0.059, and they're at the same price now, even with the uh, gem boost on them. And then same with Pups. Maybe they were held up a little bit. They're They're down... They, they just lost the gem boost today. Um, but yeah, I haven't really seen a ton of impact on that boost into other collections. Still just think it's a larger part of the macro. I do think if we see Bitcoin reclaim 70K and start ripping from there, we'll definitely see some strength into ordinals. Um, but yeah, I do want to talk to you about the Magic Eden rewards. That was pretty sick. I've heard some varying price estimates of what they might be worth. I've heard as high as 10 cents. Well, I really doubt we'll see that. I've Really hope we do get that. Um, but I think any kind of stimulus that might benefit a lot of people who are playing in the Ordinals ecosystem is for sure bullish. So I'm looking forward to that whenever they decide to have their TGE. Oh, uh, 10 cents would be phenomenal. Uh, the one thing I would I would say about like Rune Pups uh, specifically, like there's not that many listed. There's only 4.8% of the collection listed. Which, so I think... That's why also the 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 floor price like fluctuates so much because it's really just um, you know if you have motivated sellers who are just like dumping it on the floor to to get out there's they get scooped up and then it runs you know one little one little sweep and the thing is right back up to almost point one so I think that's kind of like a collection with a really thin floor um, that's why I'm looking at that one um, and I also think the Bitcoin frogs uh, floor. The other day was actually the floor was a lot thinner than what it is now, but I, I think people are now capitulating and I'm seeing more on the floor than I saw I saw earlier this week. Um, yeah, so I've just been kind of monitoring, I'm not doing anything like really aggressive, more like monitoring. But those those are my targets. Um, it will, I, I guess I can't wait to see what this uh, diamond magic Eden allocation and TG winds up being. I, I think we we'll probably see more like a penny than we'd see ten cents, but I guess I guess we'll find out soon enough. Yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> I've definitely learned this year specifically that you really can't trust any of the estimates from the the whales over the counter. Like so many of them just come in really high. I think a lot of it's intentional too. I'm I'm sure people who are behind those projects or involved with the airdrops are incentivized to keep the bids high on those so that people will continue to farm their ecosystems. Um I mean, we really haven't seen a huge airdrop in a while. I mean, I think it's just for sure, though, like the, the blast airdrop is going to make a lot of people a lot of money. Um, so I think that's going to be a major catalyst for the space. I don't think there's any way to avoid that. We've certainly seen some crazy uh, estimates on what the blast gold might be worth. 
Um, but I mean, it, it definitely seems like it's going to be pretty substantial just given how much money is staked into Blast. So I, I really think end of May, whenever that comes out and we get the TG on that, that is probably going to be the first successful airdrop that we've seen in a while. Um, so just given that there's going to be all that liquidity around, maybe that's a good benchmark for Magic Eden to come in higher than expected. I think that could really turn around the momentum and hopefully see ordinals go higher. You know, Blast is like a perfect example of like the fickleness of the community. Like when it first came out, everybody was very bearish on on Blast, myself included. But I kept my liquidity in there. I still watched it, did the multipliers, been farming some Blast gold, doing District 1. And I've been hearing as far as potential market cap on Blast, like anywhere between 5 billion and 20 billion. So it, it's going to be a substantial airdrop. I mean, if if Wormhole could be valued at 15 million, 15 billion, then like, I feel like Blast should be like way above that. But I guess the, you know, the market will, uh, will dictate that. Also, we don't know how it's going to be distributed. If it's, if, if, if you're going to get your allocation all at once, or there's going to be, you know, season three, season four, or who, who knows, right? We don't, we never, we never know. But, uh, uh, this goes to show you how like the market sentiment though changes. So it's like ebbs and flows. So now I think now um, in the Bitcoin cycle, we have like this low, whereas Blast is sort of like on a high. And then at some point, the uh, the Bitcoin cycle will uh, reverse as, as well. Yeah, I completely agree with you there, Wav. I, I really do think that it all is cyclical. And I mean, you could see that in any market. It's not just crypto it's traditional markets as well like it is cyclical it flows from place to place um so absolutely uh, i definitely think in terms of blast i'm expecting it to come in at a higher valuation than wormhole so i'm definitely expecting at least a fdv of 10 billion or higher um you know who's to say what it will or won't be at but i definitely think a lot of people are going to cook on that so hopefully they push it into our bags and hopefully we continue to see some strength in bitcoin just in sort of like a topical breakdown, I will say a trend that I've noticed on Twitter is that a lot of people who make posts relating to real estate have been showing that these like mega billionaires have been selling their homes and stating that they're selling them to get into Bitcoin. And I've seen it more and more just amongst like wealth influencers or people who post on Twitter, just sort of this preaching of rotating into Bitcoin. And there's definitely part of me that's like, okay, you don't want to get something that's too, you know, common ground. You don't want something that everyone's on the same page of, we need to buy this because usually those kinds of things are sell the news events. But just seeing that people are really liquidating their properties and putting it into Bitcoin or would rather be holding Bitcoin than any other form of asset. I, I'm really convinced this cycle, like that Bitcoin is just the holding to have, uh, you know, like I, I'm not as convicted in terms of ordinals long term because it's like at the end of the day, it's an MS painting of a puppet. So I'm not sure how many people are going to value that for how long, but it really seems like people are going to value Bitcoin for the long haul here. So regardless of everything else in the market, I'm definitely still trying to laser in on the goal at some point of taking profit on these ordinals, getting my Bitcoin bag up and, and just holding that long term. I think that's really going to be a successful asset play over the next 10 so years. And then, of course, if Bitcoin is successful, I do think ordinals will be successful with it. It's just a matter of, the, you know, getting the rotations in between uh, the pumps. You know, Bitcoin is like the big, big money players play. I, I saw earlier today there was a. Uh... Uh, an asset manager, I forgot the name of the company, with like four hundred thirty-eight uh, billion under management, disclosed that they they own one point four billion Bitcoin, and that kind of came out of nowhere. Um, so it goes to show you, people have been kind of quietly accumulating, and I still think uh, the masses are are not on board, and, and they still don't get it. I did see recently um, there was an Ohio State um, graduation ceremony and the commencement speaker started speaking about Bitcoin and he was getting like booed by the crowd. I don't know if you saw that. So I still think, um, adoption is not here. Like we're still in sort of like our own little bubble. Um, you know, in, in the, probably in the early adopter phase still. And, and then we have a uh, big money, like identifying it, uh, early and they're getting in big right now. Um, and it's not going to leave a lot for the rest when uh, when it hit, really hits mainstream. Yeah, 100%. Wow. I did see that video of the booing. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, the more you just like sit back and think about it, you know, there's a, there's only a finite supply of Bitcoin. There's only ever going to be 21 million Bitcoin. Um, and the fact that there's really not a lot of other assets in the world that have that fungibility as well as that finite supply, it makes you really go back to that boomer thesis. Um, apologies for boomers listening in the crowd. We have much love for you and your boomer wisdom. Uh, but you've just heard forever, like, it's a store of value. And I think for the longest time, it's just heard like, Bitcoin is a store of value. And it's, it's a funny statement to say, because Bitcoin is just like notorious for having these melt ups and meltdowns where it'll go from 40k to 10k, 50k to 20k, like it every time it reaches all time high, right, like it would follow up with just a crazy meltdown. And I think a lot of conservative investors would shy away from it for that reason. They're like, well, look at it melting down. Like, I'm not going to buy it here. How could it be a store of value when it falls 80% in a year? But truly, when you just like look at the world and see how many big players are adopting Bitcoin and are getting invested in it and are buying it, it's like, there's only so much Bitcoin. You can't inflate that. It's fixed. It's there. And the difference between that and like a precious metal like gold is that you can very easily transact it, right? Most people aren't walking around with vials of gold or having it accessible. Uh, you're not able to like transact it digitally unless it's a pretend gold, not actual gold. So like the fact that you have actual Bitcoin that you can transact digitally relatively quickly, proof of ownership, like it has a ton of store value from that perspective. Um, so that to me is just becoming more and more clear uh, as I, you know, mature in my time in the crypto space. So I'm definitely just like laser focused on Bitcoin and I, I definitely think it's the truth. Hey, I'm a, I'm a boomer here, so I take a I take offense to that comment. But but in all serious, it sounds like you heard <laughs> you heard you heard that uh that debate. Uh, I don't know if you heard about that debate. It was like Nuriel Rabini and Peter Schiff, and they were up against uh, Anthony uh, Scaramucci and uh, Eric Voorhees debating, I guess, Bit Bitcoin and versus gold versus you know fiat, etc. Uh, so it was a pretty good conversation. I don't, I don't know if you caught that. Um, you know, people could be into Bitcoin for a variety of reasons, whether, you know, they're in it for the tech or they're in it for the Arnolds and the art or just the, the ideology of it all, like the decentralization and, and what have you. At the end of the day, we're in it for profit, right? So we can't lose sight that like we're in, we're, we're in it to make money. No, nobody's here to lose money. Like we're all, we're all in it to make money. So, um, just don't ever lose sight of making profit. I mean, at, at the end of the day, when you take profits, it makes ho holding what you have left that much easier. We always talk about that, right? So, um, you know, don't 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 be a bag holder. Be you know, take take profits when when uh, when you need to. Uh, take those uh, lifestyle chips off the table to you know upgrade your house, go on a vacation, buy your fiance a wedding ring, whatever whatever it is. Um, Take those chips off the table when you need them for life, and then uh, it seems like the rest kind of plays out a lot, a lot easier and smoother, and, and you got less to to kind of uh, worry about. Oh, super well said, Waf. There's that boomer wisdom we were looking for. And I'm totally kidding, bro. <laughs> Did not know that you were a boomer first and foremost, but second of all, all love to the boomer communities. Everyone grows up, and at some point, I will become a boomer and will transcend generations. So it's all love. It's all love. All, all good. I'm, I am kidding. But yes, I am a boomer. I'm not kidding about that. But I am kidding about being being offended. Dude, I'm in the uh, the 97 class. So I'm not I probably shouldn't say that given that there's like, I feel like the more time I spend in the space and just host events, I like slowly hackers more to leech on to but within the walls of MVHQ, I'm a 97 class. So I'm between a Gen Z -er and a millennial. Just one of those uh, damn zillennials out there so you know get a little bit from this generation a little bit from that yeah that's cool J just to throw you like a little curveball we, we we always talk about what we're bullish on but what do, what are you bearish on oh wow i love the curveball all right i'm gonna go on magic eden let me be fully candid with what i'm bearish on here um dude i like don't even want to say it because They've just given so much value during a short period of time. I'll be honest, though. I sold my Pizza Ninja last week. Uh, I'm not as bullish as I thought I would. And it's no nothing but love for Trevor because he's an amazing guy. And I think Pizza Ninja has like a ton of value. But 
I just feel like I got most of the value from MVHQ and that's not to like shill MVHQ, but just given the fact that we have our own designated like in Orms chat, I was getting more information from here than Pizza Ninjas. Uh, and to your point of just like wanting to take profit, I was up, you know, two X from where I bought the Pizza Ninja at. So I wanted to get out of there. Um, I just found that most of the reason I joined was to troubleshoot for setting up a, a node leading up to Bitcoin uh, and Bitcoin runes. So now that that's beyond us, I got the node set up and everything. I definitely wasn't feeling super bullish on the airdrops coming out the tunnel. So I sold those. Um, the other thing I'd say is I'm just like bearish on sort of these mid-range collections, stuff that's not super significant. So I just seen random stuff on the page of Magic Eden here, like Blipstone, Retordinals, Antisocial Frogs. I think those collections are probably just going to fade away. Um, I do really like your play on Bitcoin frogs. I think stuff that's just like somewhat significant will get the rotation. Still think Natcats are a really good buy op here. Still think bitmaps will see their time in the sun. Just not sure when. Um, so yeah, I would say anything that's a blue chip, I'm still bullish on. Anything that's not a blue chip, I personally uh, would be stepping away from. What about, yeah, what about you? I might have said bearish, but I guess good sell high candidates if there's a perfect sell high candidate i think you nailed you hit the nail on the head with uh pizza ninjas because it's still holding its floor and you know a lot of that value is already given at the having right so if you want to like kind of cash out on profits it seems like a, a really good uh sell high collection um the other ones i, I want to say that i'm kind of bearish on and and not because uh is there anything wrong with the collection? Just sort of that don't really buy the price action is um, honey badgers. I think at point zero two, I just could see that bleed down back to where it was, and I was saying that before. Uh, I also think I've been noticing in the past day or two that uh, Megapunks has been getting some some action. Uh, I, I think that's probably associated with that. Uh, rune drop that they're going to get, I think, in association with Pizza Ninjas. So I think I've seen that floor move plenty of times and just go right back down. So I think, again, that's one of those unloved collections that I think um, it's up to 0.0065. I, I mean, I think in a few more days, we'll see this back at to like 0 0.003. Um, and, and to your point, I think it's like those mid-range stuff that I'm kind of not, not feeling so much. Um, those are kind of like the ones that stuck out at me, I would say. Um, and, I, and I think that I think that's about it. But I, I guess I really was asking you without really uh, thinking it through for myself. Yeah, no worries. Well, I definitely feel like, I mean, it, it's hard to say for sure when the market's this choppy because, again, like, I think as soon as Bitcoin kind of breaks free and may, maybe it's that 70K mark that Jake talks about on Wake and Jake, maybe it's even that 64K mark that, you know, we flirted with but haven't like passed it with conviction yet. I think once we pass that, we're going to just see a lot of collections come back. So there's not really anything I'm like bearish on in the sense that I think that I think if the market turns around, everything's going to go up. That That's like pretty standard, right? Be it meme coins or ordinals. Like I'm, I'm pretty convicted that once we get the return of volume two ordinals, everything's going to fly. But both of us, it sounds like are in this phase of let's pack our bags with the quality. So maybe it's not so much like what are we bearish on? It's more so what should we be most convicted in and what bags are we not trying to load up here? So all those bags you mentioned, I mentioned as well, I would agree. Like I'm not really trying to add any of those. But the stuff that we've mentioned time and time again, just this blue chip quality stuff that people have wanted and continue to want, the stuff where the floor is holding well, like for sure when the rotation comes, those are going to pump the hardest. Yeah. So, I mean, really the takeaway is, um, you know, pay attention to the market, uh, touch some grass, get in on some stuff that uh, you think is undervalued, uh, be chain agnostic. Uh, I think go where where the attention flows but don't keep you know keep an eye out on on areas that are feel, are under loved at the moment and uh if you do that you continue to do that and then the bitcoin price comes back um you should be in a good position to uh maximize uh, your returns yes sir well said
All right, so I do have a hard cutoff today because I got to host the Forbes AMA, uh, and I'm a little bit under the weather here. Um, if you couldn't tell by me stammering a little bit this episode, but I want to close out laugh just by, you know, circling back to what are the plays? What are we looking at? For me, it's got to be hands down Wizard. I, I just want to reemphasize it before we close out. Like, do the market cap calculations of what Magic Internet money is going to be at right now look at the leaders, even with runes down, it is half the price of the other market leaders. I think it is easily the best meme in the space. It has a lot of significance to Bitcoin. And if we see runes go to 500 million, which we easily could if the rotation comes back, I mean, that's like a 4x easy on magic internet money. So it just seems like a super no-brainer play. I definitely love scaling into it at this point. If it gets below $5, I mean, like you got to be kidding. It would just be the lowest market cap valuation to be under 100 million so definitely recommend to people listening check out wizard it hit a high of like 13 dollars at one point so it's already 50 percent off that um now with the tokenomics out you can figure out what the market cap is going to be figure out what seems fair for you but i think it's a really great play at this price point yeah i agree with you i think i think for me that is a top three play along with um the BRC20 pups and the rune pups. I think those are sort of like my top three with uh, Bitcoin frogs coming in like a notch below being probably a, a little bit of a longer uh, term play. But I'd put that at number four. So right there, those are kind of like my top plays. I think this week I am going to try and add a Bitcoin frog and add some uh, BRC20s or additional rune pups to the collection. And uh, like not not overly aggressively, just just add a couple and then kind of sit and wait. And and that's it. That's it. And I think I think that's a wrap for the show. I know you got a hard stop. Um, if there's any questions in the in the crowd, uh, fire them away now. Um, if not, I guess uh, Ross, always a good show as always. And, um, you know, we'll speak to you next week. Thanks so much, Waf. Really appreciate it. Um, I guess in the questions point, I don't know if Fasta was trying to tag us or not, but this happened during the show. Um, he put a mint up here. This is an Are You Human? So I think it's a little bit of a play on like the you know anti-robot software that they have, but it seemed interesting. Um, oh, also, Waf, I guess we should bring up that Bitcoin is having its conference in Asia, I believe, uh, at some point this week, maybe at the end of the week. So that could be a catalyst. And we also had the Hong Kong ETF, I think, since our last episode, um, which had similar price action to the US. Bitcoin sold off a lot, and now it's getting a little bit of a bid coming back into it. But they do have an ETF now. So that's pretty notable for for Bitcoin holders out there. Yeah, that is a big deal. Also, grayscale inflows are occurring now. There's no more outflows. So that that's also interesting. So I feel like a lot of things, a lot of positive things are not priced in yet. Um, so it should should be good. I mean, we're now what three weeks post having, um, and I th I think um, we there's gonna be a time in the market where we we're eventually gonna have to start um, running up again. We we are bumping up against some geopolitical things out there the the macro e economy so there's some certain things that are potential headwinds but for the most part i i continue to uh, stay bullish yeah well said bob and I, I really liked what you said earlier about this is the part of the market where people or the market makes you want to get like shaked out it happens all the time. Like I can't tell you how many times in my experience as a trader I've been shaken out or have been close to shaking out. And it's like, I'm sure all of us on this voice chat have experienced it at some point, right? You sell something just for it to immediately pump or you buy something just for it to immediately dump. Um, the market, I mean, again, like this is not financial advice by any means for anyone listening, you know, do whatever you think is going to happen. Uh, but Definitely at this price point, I think a lot of people are probably feeling a little bit fatigued and tempted to sell. Uh, but I feel like the market does usually rotate back in. And we've seen this before in other bull runs that we've been in in crypto. Like it usually doesn't just go straight up the entire time. Um, and this time frame of how long it's taken, I think is pretty par for the course. It's usually not like a five day sell off and then all, you know, all fuel resumed. It's usually like a few months, a month to a month and a half where we dip. And then we run it back. So I, I do think the the time frame lines up, and I think that this is probably just a shake off that's gonna 
correct, but you know, we'll we'll touch in next week and we'll see. Sounds good. Oh, cool. Well, as always, Waf, pleasure, man. Appreciate the insight as always, and uh, we'll see everybody next time. Have a good one.